welcome back to That Paradox Computing, back with another spotlight on a one-touch teleport system, this time using Spatial I.O. Um, so, well, let's just get straight into it. I'll show you what it does, because that's really what most of you are here to see. Um, this is, yeah, a, spa a bunch of spatial pylons, and this is me. Um, we've got three destinations actually programmed in. These ones just won't do anything at the moment. But, um, and you can add more screens for more destinations if you like. But, uh, let's go right now to destination, well, alright, one is a castle, um, in the overworld, two is a void age, and three is this base here. So let's check out, uh, well, let's go to the castle first, I guess, go to number one to start off with. Ta-da! And here we are, at the castle, check it out. It's a castle. Um, and then, if we go to destination two, uh, it's a friend's void age where he does a lot of his uh, tech stuff. And why is this taking so long? Okay, that was weird. I think that might have been server lag. This is happening on a server, so yeah. Um, that can happen. Also, sometimes the system need, uh, might just need a bit, a bit of power to recharge or whatever. But yeah, so here we are. Check it out. It's a void age. And then, um, yeah, and I can also get back to, you know, my castle, which is, you know, da, 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 here we are. Cool. So, um, why would you want to use this over any of my other one-touch teleport systems, which use this? Um, those being the, what was it? The first one was with the IC2 teleporters, and the other one was with um, the Miscraft portals. Uh, well, with this guy... You can build a structure, and, um, there we go, that's a bit phallic, isn't it? Um, you can build a structure, and, da -da -da -da, let's go to, um, that void age. Ta-da! The structure comes with you! This also works for chests, so let's chuck some stuff in there. We'll go to the castle, and... Ta-da! The structure and the chest with the items come with, with you. Now, not all items can actually be um, teleported. Like, I think probably most of the vanilla blocks can be um, teleported, but yeah. Um, oh, God. And don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, so this all took quite a while to make because, yeah, it was all done legit. Uh, the inspiration for this project came from Haswald. Um, who runs the server, it was his idea to do something like this, and, um, yeah, and then I took it and ran with it, and it turned out pretty well, um, I really like how it works. Now, um, so how does this all work? Um, Spatial IO, it's part of the, um, Applied Energistics mod, and, um, yeah, it's very late game. Um, to run something this big, you're gonna be using... Well, about a million EU per teleport, so um, work that out to Minecraft Jules, AE, RF, whatever you want. Um, now, I'm running on, this is running on the Feed, Feed the Beast uh, TPPI pack with a couple of added mods. Um, and yeah, but uh, the only thing, this should all just work, I think, in TPPI. You may just need to enable spatial I.O. in the configs, because I don't think in TPPI that's enabled by default. Yeah, but um, yeah, so it's kind of cool. You can make this to any size you want. Each destination has to be the same size. Um, so this is a 10 by 10 area inside the pylons, so the outside the pylons. It's like each pylon's 10 long, but it also goes out one on each side, so... It's, I guess, a 12 by 12 structure, but yeah, the interior area is 10 by 10. Um, what else do I need to say? Probably not a lot. Let's have a look at how it works. We'll go back to um, the Void Age. Now, um, and uh, first I guess I'll do a very quick explana explanation of how um, the IO works. So here's um, one of my little prototypes from when I was first developing this system. Um, so what I'll do is I'll grab the disc out of here, and um, let's just place a block in here. Cool. So, I hope this disc, I think this disc works with this setup. Anyway, um, if it doesn't, oh well. 
Uh, so the spatial, so this is the spatial I/O port in here. And basically, what you do is you take a disk, you apply a redstone signal, and it'll either deploy what's on the disk, or if there's nothing on the disk and there's something in the structure, it will put whatever's on the structure onto the disk. As you can see, these look kind of like applied energistics drives. Uh, I've got a redstone clock on this, so it's just constantly trying to deploy. Cool. So we'll drop that. Oop, we'll drop that guy in. We will drop that guy in. There we go. And bam! Okay, now I know that disappeared, that's because it actually got sent back into this chest by this system. But what it, what it should have done is picked up those blocks, yep, which I put in there. So we'll take it back out. And so now this disc has the blocks which I put down before. If I put it back into here, it uh, should deploy the image back out here. There you go, there's the block. Ta-da! Um, and if I was in there, I'd also get saved onto the disk. And that's something to bear in mind if you do use this system while you're setting it up. I recommend having a uh, rod of return, uh, just in case you get something wrong and end up getting stuck in a drive. Um, or just have uh, a linking book with you, some way to get between dimensions back to, yeah. Um, because basically, um, you can go into the, um, yeah, into the drive. Cool. Um, and you can walk around in there, so you can have a little base in the drive if you want, and just live there. It's all black, it's only, and only the size of, you know, the wall you made, so if you only have a 3x3, three three, you'd be stuck in there. Though you can make a drive up to, uh, 128 by 128 Okay, so that's the basics of how that, that works, and then you just gotta make the pylons to surround an area that you want to work in. Easy, easy, easy. Alright, so, how does this work? Okay, so, um, let's go through the setup. We've got a computer, it's connected, um, via cabled modems to, um, this monitor and to this tesseract as well. I'm using open peripherals a lot in this, which allows you to wrap a lot of blocks as a peripheral. Um, so we're wrapping that tesseract as a peripheral. Um, I'm actually wrapping this chest here behind the computer and this ender chest under here as a peripheral as well. And um, if I actually just go to edit test, I can show you that. So here you can see the tesseract is wrapped as tile underscore thermal expansion, blah, 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 blah. Uh, a monitor is one. I was toying around with the idea of using a second monitor. I might add that later on. So that's there. Um, and chest uh, at the back of the computer and um, the ender chest underneath the computer, all wrapped. Cool. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into the code on this because it's not that exciting. Um, but uh, I guess I could just maybe show a little bits of the code while it's up. Um, uh, edit and startup's not the one I want to be running either. Um, okay, cool. So here we get this. This is just the display. This just writes up the, you know, one through five, whatever up on the screen. If you want to look at that, I'll put up a paste bin. Um, it's a handy little thing for just writing a little bit of code just for writing stuff up onto a monitor. Just, you know, that looks like that. You can change your background colors if you like. Um, it doesn't look like that. Uh, it doesn't usually say try again. It only says try again if you try to go to a level that doesn't hasn't been programmed in. Okay, so um, we're just waiting for... It's running off events. It's either waiting for a monitor um, monitor touch or it's going to be waiting for a redstone. So let's say someone touches the monitor. So um, they go, yep, I want to go destination 2. The computer gets that. Um, so we read the touch. Um, and then... It's just going to check if um, that destination actually exists. The way the destinations work is um, basically there's files called 1, 2, and 3. So if I edit 1, what it's going to have on it is um, the Tesseract frequency. See how we've got that Tesseract wrapped as a peripheral? We can set the frequency on that. So it's going to, first thing it's going to do is it's going to get the level, make sure that the computer actually has something written for that level. Then if it does, it's going to set the Tesseract, um, this Tesseract here, to the destination. Um, so it'll be set up exactly like this, obviously, on each one of the, um, you know, teleports. Um, so what we'll do is uh, set that Tesseract. Then the next thing it's going to do is um, this ender chest, which will always have the drive in it, right? So they're all sharing one drive on one ender chest. And what it's going to do... It's going to spit this drive um, down into, there's a chest underneath here that you can't quite see. Um, I can't use a pipe because um, if we go to edit, uh, test, uh, if you go down, you'll see, if we get down here, here we go, um, ender chest, push item down. So this is using um, 
wrapping the end of chests as a peripheral, which you can do with open peripherals. The thing is, it actually has to push into an inventory, which pipes don't tend to have. So you can't push into a build craft pipe or something. You actually got to push into another inventory. So what I've got is underneath here, um, what you'll see is the end of chest pushes down to this chest, where this transfer node will automatically, this transfer node will suck out anything that arrives in this chest, no matter what it is. Uh, so I'll suck out that and then push it up all the way along here, up there, into what you will see is the spatial AO. Yeah, so here it comes up here. So um, it's going to push the drive out down the bottom, and up it goes into the spatial AO, where, because this rednet clock is constantly, uh, sorry, this redstone clock is constantly going, giving it um, a redstone pulse, um, it's going to then encode the drive, and then as soon as the drive arrives here, this transfer node is going to spit it back out into this chest here. Now, while, um, as soon as it pushes the thing out the bottom there, what it should be doing is then trying to push um, anything in this chest up into this tesseract, which, as you saw, as I mentioned before, was set for the destination. So, what it's going to do is, if we just come here, you should see, um, uh, yeah, so we're going to push this down, um, and then what it's going to do is constantly, this while chest item up one equals zero do. Basically, if it does actually push an item out, what it's going to do is it's going to get a one. So this just keeps it constantly trying to push the, um, just in a little loop, oh, it's printing nope on the screen. I probably should get rid of that. I don't actually need that anymore. That was just some debugging stuff. But um, as soon as it returns a one, this loop will break. And yeah, so, um, L, uh, and then look, if something goes wrong, it prints, try again. Um, up on the monitor. Uh, cool. So what we'll be doing is then constantly, as soon as, that, as soon as it successfully pushes the drive up into the Tesseract to go to its destination, the program will end. Basically, the program will end for this guy. I'll go back listening for an event, either an event from um, the Monitor Touch or a Redstone event, which we're going to get into now. Because once this guy's done pushing that up and it's gone to the destination, let's pretend we're now at our destination. This Tesseract um, will receive the um so this let's just say that this was ascending it would send out here on frequency like 33 yeah 33 and arrive at the destination obviously not the same one a different one um where this tesseract will then spit straight into the spatial io port the drive it will have a redstone clock so it will automatically deploy the image so yourself and any structure that you've been in will then at that point get deployed um, this will suck, uh, the transfer node will suck the drive out as soon as it's been deployed, at which point, um, I've got this, uh, gate here connected to a wooden pipe, so, um, and it's set, oops, <laughs> whoops, it is set for, um, if I click on the gate, there we go, as soon as an item is in the inventory and emits a redstone signal, the redstone signal comes out, and this red alloy wire, wire, where are they, where are they? Um, will generate a redstone event on the computer. And as you can see, if we come down, um, there should be an if event equals redstone. Else if, if the event is equal to redstone, it's going to um, chest up, push, uh, chest up, push item down. Um, which is literally just from that chest, what it does is it pushes the drive, which just got into it, down. Um, where into this other chest where the drive automatically gets sucked out into the end of chest waiting to be used where it will sit there and wait to be used from you know until another system tries to use it so they're all sharing the same drive and um, yeah that's basically how it works it's a hell of a thing I hope that made sense uh, it was it's definitely a convoluted system took a while to figure out this other tester act is just providing power um now just another thing you're gonna need a lot of these energy cells something this size can run off one something 10 by 10 usually well i'm needing about 10 redstone uh 10 energy cells for um for this guy they're not redstone energy cells they're just um applied energistics energy cells um yeah i need about 10 of those don't know if those actually interact with other things i don't know if you actually have to use those i should check that out Cool. Um, so yeah, if you're going to use this, just make sure that everything is the same. Each destination is the same size. The drive can only deploy into um, 
from what I can see anyway, a drive can only deploy into something the same size, um, you know, same area as it. So uh, you can't do a 6x6 into a 10x10, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, while you're setting the system up, make sure you don't accidentally get trapped inside your drive. Um, the more pylons you use, the less power um, it's going to use. I've got everything running at 100% efficiency and it's using like a million AU. So, and it drastically, like, yeah, you really want running at 100%. It's very late game. The recipes, well, check them out, but they're pretty full on. <sighs> I think that's everything, guys. <laughs> uh, thank you, Haswell, for the inspiration. Thank you to you guys for coming along and checking this out. Um, feel free to check out some of my other videos. There's... Um, other teleport systems, if you're interested in using something which is just touch screen to multiple destinations, you know, just one touch kind of thing. I have uh, other videos and paste bins up there. Uh, the other ones are more modular, quite easy to use. You don't have to do anything manually, at least for the um, IC2 teleport system. That also is quite expensive. Um, that one's actually probably even in terms of power more expensive than this one. Um, or check out some of my other videos if you're interested in computer craft at all. I do have a computer craft tutorial series as well, so feel free to check that out. Um, so yeah, like and subscribe if that's your thing. If not, yeah, that's also cool. Um, and yeah, check us a comment if you've got any questions. And um, whatever. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And I hope I haven't left anything out. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.